Depending on whose side of the story you're on, this video would be called either the liberation or the invasion of Kova. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. Goa has been a trading port on the West Indian coast since ancient times. It changed hands many times under local lords until the Portuguese, led by this guy, conquered the area in 1510. Goa thus became the center of Portuguese India. For the next 200 years, Goa flourished under Portuguese trade and it served as the de facto capital of Portugal in the East. By the end of the 17th century, Portuguese power in Asia was in decline. Other seafaring nations like the Dutch, the British and to a lesser extent the French were starting to gain a foothold in Asian trade. Portugal's grip on Goa, however, remained intact until the late 1940s when India gained its independence. After becoming an independent republic, the Indian government insisted that Goa, along with other minor European holdings such as Punducherry and Haveli, should be returned to India. By this time, India had been an independent nation for a few years, and other colonial exclaves such as Punducherry had already made a smooth transition to Indian hands, well, except, except for Goa, Daman and Diu, which were held by the Portuguese. Throughout the 1950s, there were many attempts by the Indian government to solve the issue diplomatically through international community intervention. However, the Portuguese asserted that its territory on the Indian subcontinent was not a colony but a part of metropolitan Portugal itself, and hence, its transfer was not negotiable, and that India had no right to this territory because the Republic of India did not exist at the time when Goa came under Portuguese rule. When cordial relations failed, both sides rushed to issue trade embargoes, restrictions on visa and travel. And then in 1954, India effectively cut off Portuguese access to Dadra and Nagar Haveli, which was an exclave within India about 20 kilometers off the coast. In early August 1954, armed activists attacked and forced the surrender of Portuguese forces stationed in Dadra and both Dadra and Nagar under the Indian Union. This action alarmed the Portuguese government in Lisbon. Portugal looked for United Nations mediation. India, on the other hand, assured that there had been no military intervention. But the following year in 1955, when 3,000 Indian activists tried to enter Goa for what they called a peaceful protest, the Portuguese police officers violently repulsed them, resulting in 25 deaths. The news of the massacre swayed public opinion and the Indian government hinted at an armed conflict if the matter wasn't resolved soon. To his credit, the Portuguese Prime Minister, Salazar, not Slytherin, did try to take a diplomatic route and hold a referendum, but all talks came to a dead end. On 24th November 1961, Goa ground troops noticed an Indian vessel venturing a little too close to their shore. Fearing that the boat carried an Indian invasion force, the soldiers fired at the vessel, which resulted in a death and a few injuries. But then it turned out that it was an Indian passenger vessel passing by. It was too late. The damage had been done. India was ready for all out war. Amid the rising tensions for the past few years, the Portuguese government had made preparations of their own. They had strengthened their garrisons and increased Portuguese military presence there from almost nothing to 4,000 men. The Portuguese government and military commands were well aware that even with this effort to strengthen the garrison of Goa, the Portuguese forces would never be sufficient to face an attack from the overwhelmingly stronger Indian armed forces. What they hoped was to politically deter the Indian government from attempting a military aggression through the showing of a strong will to fight and a sacrifice to defend Goa. The Portuguese Premier wanted his army in Goa to hold out for at least 8 days, within which time he hoped to gather international support against the Indian invasion. The first attack came at 10 in the morning of 17th December, when a unit of Indian troops attacked and occupied the town of Molingem in the northeast. By 4.30 in the evening of the same day, Bikolim was under fire. The Portuguese retaliated by blowing up several bridges to halt the advancing Indian army. Early the next day, the Indian army marched into Goa 
on three fronts. The Indian Air Force bombed airfields, both civilian and military, to make sure there were no Portuguese air power in the skies. By the evening of 18th December, most of Goa was overrun by the Indian forces. The retreating Portuguese offered little resistance. A large party of more than 2,000 Portuguese soldiers had taken refuge at the entrance to Vasco de Gama in the hopes of making a last stand. Holding out against the Indians until Portuguese naval reinforcements could arrive. Well, at least those were the orders from this man. But seeing the imminent danger for his troops, the numerical advantage of the advancing army and the available resources at his disposal, Governor General Manuel Silva took the decision to surrender. The official Portuguese surrender was conducted in a formal ceremony held at 8.30 in the evening of 19th December, when Governor General Manuel Silva signed the instrument of unconditional surrender, bringing to an end 451 years of Portuguese rule in Goa.